Second piece on this is to get your child checked out medically. Uh, that may mean talking to your primary care physician, setting up an appointment where they can do either a blood screen or a urine screen, because if you're finding some signs, uh, there may be other kinds of things that the child may be using that you really want to know about. And through uh, lab tests uh, and your analysis, you can pretty well get an idea of what other kinds of things that the child might be using. Now, if somebody's drinking or somebody is using marijuana, uh, probably the best bet is to also call the mental health center because you want to start getting some information. Uh, there's also a great uh, website called uh, antidrug.com and it's for parents, it's about this very subject, it's, uh, it's an excellent resource because it explores you know, all aspects of signs, um, how to get support, and the kinds of resources that might be useful. Uh, but once you get the determination from either the doctor or if there isn't a primary care, it's best to bring the child to the hospital because you don't want to just take the child at his word that he's only using this substance and there's no real clear idea that he isn't using anything else. So really, you know, trying to notice it as early on as possible is going to save probably a lot of kids from going down that wrong path. If you can almost sort of nip it in the bud from the get-go, when you first start suspecting something, even, even like you said, if the kid does say, well, I only you know, smoke marijuana once a week and it's not a big deal. Yeah, and your child can be very convincing. Um, right. The one thing that we always think about uh, in the substance abuse field is literally time is on your side as far as the problem is only going to continue to get worse. It may take a longer time with something like alcohol and marijuana, but a much shorter time if it's uh, harder drugs like pills or cocaine. Um, so you may find that uh, you know, things change dramatically, the signs and symptoms that you talked about. Um, but the key here is that you, although it's helpful you know, to be on top of what you're finding uh, and telling the child about this, opening up the discussion, uh, if the child ends up uh, basically convincing you that this is not a problem, uh, as time goes on, you're going to find out whether or not it is a problem or how much of a problem it really is. So, uh, and kids can be very convincing. You know, they can tell you that, uh, you know, it's really not uh, their stuff that you found, it's somebody else they're holding or they're just experimenting. And, you know, as adults, you know, we all understand experimenting and we start it. But, uh, as you're indicating, uh, the important aspect of this is to address it forthrightly right away. Now, John, I have a question. So some parents, maybe if they suspect their middle schooler is, has you know, tried a little bit of alcohol, um, they may not want to, like you said, jump into the school or going to see their doctor mm -hmm. because, you know, for fear of, you know, you'll know who I am. You'll know, you know, that I'm with my child and something's going on maybe. So are there resources or hotlines that you could call or I guess logging on to the antidrug.com you could get more information mm -hmm. but are there, can you stay confidential to a certain extent at the beginning, at the very very early stages of maybe suspecting something? It's, it's a good question, yes. In fact, uh, most mental health centers, in fact, uh, doctors uh, are pretty much um, required to maintain confidentiality okay. because everybody realizes that substances are a real sensitive topic mm -hmm. especially you know trying to deal with parents and especially uh, the nature of you know your child uh, may or may not be at high risk you know for continuing on to use mm -hmm. so uh, there's a lot of sensitivity that's involved whenever somebody might call their doctor or they might call the mental health center uh, also talking to your friends because if you're of a certain age group you, you know, and you've got and you, your friends have children they're more likely to also uh, be concerned about this sort of thing. Uh, getting involved with uh, school counselors or people that you that you can trust. Mm -hmm. uh, talking to coalitions uh, that are in your neighborhood because uh, these are all resources that are meant to help. They're not, they're not interested in trying to uh, cast judgments or... Or single you know, someone out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, in effect, uh, 
don't let the idea of uh, oh this this can't be possible or you know could this really be going on in my life or I'm feeling guilty because it makes me a bad parent uh, don't let that get in the way because it really stops most parents uh, initially from getting any kind of help at all so John would there be a different approach to take if let's say maybe you miss some early signs or symptoms as a parent and you're realizing now wait my child is really caught up in something I need more help than just you know maybe getting a or talking to the pediatrician you know if there's heavy heavy use going on what do you suggest a course of action for that yeah. primarily again I think it's important to be able to uh, address the individual stay focused on the subject which happens to be substances tell them what you know tell them what you've experienced and tell them that basically you're getting tired and you don't want to be doing you know this kind of thing and deal with it as a medical issue and as a medical issue if your child is coming in under the influence of whatever the drug happens to be it's already a pretty significant problem and you want to address that problem quite often the best way to address that problem is to actually uh, tell the child that they need to, you and they are going to go down to the hospital and you're going to get checked out it may mean sitting in the emergency room for a number of hours but you don't know what's going on in your child's system. You don't know what effect all of this may be having. Again, they're telling you one thing, but there may be a lot of other things that they're not telling you, especially with adolescents. I mean, they don't necessarily you know, tell you everything just because you're opening up the topic. So uh, you'd want to do that, uh, especially if you have other children in the house. They want to be able to see, you want to be able to model for them that we see this as a significant problem. Again, more like a medical issue, but we see this as a significant problem and we don't want the other kids in the family to be affected by what's going on with the older kid. This is very difficult for parents. I mean, I can sit here and talk about how, you know, these are things that I would do. But a lot of times parents need to get a lot of support. Um, we at Riverside often get, you know, many calls from people who are saying, you know, my son's using substances, I don't know what to do. And we'll often talk to them, maybe bring them in, you know, give them some strategies, some guidance but focus mo mainly on trying to get help you know, for that person who's really struggling. Um, if you've got a, an issue, and this actually happens uh, a number of times, if you've got an issue where the child is uh, refusing to get any help, or they're, uh, they're, they're becoming combative, or they're you know, doing destructive things, uh, you know, stealing, uh, you're living in, you know, in, in a house with locks on the door, which happens a lot more frequently than you might want to think, uh, then you've gotten to the point where the child essentially needs to get a higher level of care and if they're creating problems in the house frankly you need to call the police you need to get them involved um, again this, all of this is very can be very difficult but all of it is really focused on trying to get the child help um, we counsel parents a lot on working up to that point uh, because most parents aren't going to say, well, gee, I'm going to call the police on my kids right. and have them end up in jail, and then what could happen? So the consequence is that they'll spend a lot of time uh, fretting and uh, they'll be trying to, in effect, convince themselves that it really isn't so bad. Uh, when you get calls and, you know, you're asking people, over the phone, you know, whether they're actually, uh, you know, things missing or that they've uh, got locks on the door, uh, by that time, you know, things have gotten way past the initial stages. And again, uh, you owe it to your younger children to take care of this as a parent and as a guide because nobody else in the family is going to be able to do this. Um, utilizing friends, again, utilizing uh, local health situations, um, places, uh, they're all available. Uh, that's the key here. There is a lot of availability. When a child get, if a child actually ends up going to a hospital and gets evaluated for the substances, and I'm talking mostly around the teenage years, uh, there are placements available. It's much better actually to have somebody evaluated through the hospital because the hospital can refer to a higher level of care if need be. And a higher level of care could be a residential program, it could be an intensive outpatient program, or other kinds of programs which the hospital could probably explain to you uh, much better than I could in this segment. 
But what I would say is if people have difficulty, if people are struggling, uh, you can give us a call uh, at Riverside. You can go to your local hospital. Most hospitals have a substance abuse unit. And you can talk to people, uh, again, privately and sensitively about the struggles that you're having. And the key here is to do something and not, not wait.